Thank you uh, very much for being here today at uh, this wonderful American location. Uh, today's announcement really is about two things. The first is for all of us who uh, are from the West and recognize the importance of water. Water truly is the lifeblood of our communities. It's the lifeblood of our economies. It's the lifeblood of who we are. And so the steps that we are announcing today is about the protection of that lifeblood. The second is this is also an announcement about jobs and uh, tourism. We know that the millions of visitors that come here to the Grand Canyon every year and that come to all of our national parks and our wildlife refuges and our great natural wonders uh, throughout this country really add an incredible amount to the economy of the United States. And even as I was walking in this morning meeting a young man who's here from uh, the UK, uh, who's come here to visit as uh, do the millions of visitors to the Grand Canyon every, every year, they create over seven and a half million jobs a year for the United States. So we need to keep in mind that uh, tourism and our natural wonders are very much a part of uh, the good economics of our country. Uh, 142 years ago, John Wesley Powell and his crew became the first explorers ever known to successfully steer their way through the rocks and the gorges, the rapids and the whirlpools of America's greatest natural wonder, the Grand Canyon. Powell came here to read the story of our planet in the layers of the canyon walls. He came to study the forces that shaped this land, pebble after pebble, flood after flood, over two billion years. To be here for John Wesley Powell, or for any of us, is to be overwhelmed and humbled by the scale of geologic time. The minutes, hours, and days by which we measure our lives are hardly an instant in the life of these canyons. Yet all of us, by the decisions we make in our short time here, can alter the grandeur of this place. Our ancestors understood this. Time and again, the tribal communities who have inhabited this land, people like John Wesley Powell, Theodore Roosevelt, and Stephen Mather, helped us choose the protection of the ancient over the pressures of the now. As Teddy Roosevelt famously implored from this very place, leave it as it is, you cannot improve on it, the ages have been at work on it, and man can only mar it. That courage, that wisdom, that patience is why we have Grand Canyon National Park today. Why we have iconic places like Yosemite and Yellowstone and wild and untrammeled forests and public lands for all Americans to enjoy and explore. Our ancestors for sure could not have known that one day the Grand Canyon would attract more than four million visitors a year. The hunting, fishing, and tourism and outdoor recreation would generate an estimated three and a half billion dollars just in this area alone. Or that millions of Americans living in cities like Phoenix and Los Angeles would rely on this water, on this river, and on this canyon for clean, healthy drinking water and water supplies for agriculture. And many tribes in the area see their history and their culture woven throughout the landscape of this great Grand Canyon. Like our ancestors, we do not know how future Americans will enjoy, experience, and benefit from this place. And that's one of the many reasons why wisdom, caution, and science should guide our protection of the Grand Canyon. In this moment, we face a choice. We face a choice that could profoundly affect the Grand Can Canyon in ways that we do not yet understand. Some of the lands near the Grand Canyon contain uranium resources that have helped meet our energy needs. Over the past 20 years, eight uranium mines have operated in the area, and one study has shown that a possible additional eight to 11 mines might be developed in this area under already valid existing rights. The question for us, though, is not whether to stop cautious and moderate uranium development, but whether to allow further expansion of uranium mining in this area and the establishment and location of what would be thousands of, ura of uranium mining claims at this point. The Bureau of Land Management, under the outstanding leadership of Director Bob Abbey, has been carefully studying this question since July of 2009, when I initi initiated a two-year closure of the area to new uranium mining claims. 
BLM, in coordination with other agencies, the states, counties, tribes, and other partners, published a draft environmental impact statement that examined whether to implement a 20-year mineral withdrawal subject to valid existing rights for certain areas around the Grand Canyon. The options they considered were no withdrawal, which would allow new hard rock mining claims to be filed, a partial withdrawal of approximately 300,000 acres, an alternative partial withdrawal of 650,000 acres, and a full withdrawal of approximately 1 million acres. The BLM received nearly 300,000 comments on this draft EIS, and now the time has come to respond to those comments and identified a preferred alternative for a final environmental impact statement that the agency will complete by this fall. Based on the analysis that has been done and the public comments that have been received, in particular among the water users that recognize that the Colorado River is the lifeblood of their communities, I am directing two steps to be taken today. First, I am ordering a temporary emergency withdrawal through December 20th, 2011 of the full 1 million, million acres we are studying for the potential long-term withdrawal subject to valid existing rights. This emergency six-month withdrawal will ensure that no new mining claims can be filed after the current two-year segregation expires on July 20th. Second, based on the input and advice and guidance from the Bureau of Land Management Director Bob Abbey, the National Park Service Director John Jarvis, United States Geological Services Director Marcia McNutt, and United States Forest Service Chief Tom Tidwell. I am directing the BLM to identify the full 1 million acre uranium withdrawal as a preferred alternative in the final EIS. This alternative, if ultimately selected, will ensure that all public lands adjacent to the Grand Canyon National Park are protected from new hard rock mining claims, all of which are in the watershed of the Grand Canyon. Now this remains an ongoing process. Based on this direction, BLM will complete the environmental analysis of the preferred alternative and other alternatives and publish a final environmental impact statement this fall. I will then be ready to make a final decision on the potential 20-year mineral withdrawal. Finally, I want to, take, to make a couple of things uh, clear. First, I know some critics will falsely claim that with a full 1 million acre withdrawal from new hard rock mining claims that we would somehow be denying all access to uranium resources. That of course is not true. Uranium like oil and gas, solar, wind, geothermal and other resources remain a vital component of a responsible and comprehensive energy plan for our nation. We will continue to develop uranium in northern Arizona, Wyoming and other places in the country. It is worth noting Again, that we believe there are likely a number of valid existing rights in the proposed withdrawal area, even if the preferred alternative is ultimately success selected as a final decision. We expect continued development of those claims and the potential for new, new mines over the next 20 years. What we will not allow, however, is the location of additional mining claims. In fact, cautious development with strong oversight could help us answer critical questions about water quality and environmental impacts in the mining area. This science derived from experience could help others decide what actions are necessary to protect the Grand Canyon. Second, as we move through the final analysis towards a decision, let us be reminded of what these canyons have taught us in the conservation arena for our nation and our world and teach us even today. It is what John Wesley Powell and his crew experienced here as they risk their lives more than a century ago. And it's what families sense when they stand on this rim as we stand here to today as President Roosevelt stood here long ago. That our lives are fleeting instants when measured against the geologic time and forces that forged this Grand Canyon. But our decisions, our actions can alter billions, billions of years in all its wonder and glory. So let us be cautious, let us be patient, and let us be humble. Now this decision that I have arrived at today is a decision which I arrived at with long deliberation and input from the key leadership 
at the United States Department of the Interior and the United States Department of Agriculture. But I can say without a doubt that one of the great leaders and ambassadors for making sure that the conservation agenda of the United States of America is one that is upheld day by day, week by week, for generations to come. And that's uh, your congressman in the state of Arizona, Raul Grijalda. We will recognize him. Please stand, congressman. Thank you so much for your leadership. And within the United States uh, Department of Agriculture, uh, Secretary Tom Vilsack and uh, Under Secretary Harris Sherman, together with uh, Chief uh, Tidswell from the uh, U.S. Forest Service, have been involved with us as uh, we have uh, set aside these lands because uh, a significant portion of the million acres are uh, administered by the United States uh, Department of Agriculture and the U.S. Forest Service. And within my agency, and they will speak in this order, I am uh, always comforted and uh, get great guidance by making sure that I rely on the advice and wisdom of uh, the best team I believe ever assembled at the Department of Interior to lead the great agencies of our department. We'll hear first from uh, the director of the Bureau of Land Management, Bob Abbey, who oversees nearly 250 million acres of America's lands from uh, many of the states across the West and places like Alaska, but this is one of the very special places that uh, he administers. We'll also hear from uh, Director John Jarvis, who oversees our nearly 400 National Parks unit, units and uh, is one of our outstanding leaders in the department in making sure that we fulfill our mission to protect the natural resources of our country as well as to serve as custodians of America's history. And we'll hear from Dr. Marsha McNutt, who oversees the United States Geological Survey with its 10,000 employees, uh, which is uh, the best earth science agency, now over 100 years old, who has, uh, is viewed upon by scientists around the world as the best earth science agency on our earth. And she has been involved in helping us uh, with the science and developing the science around this initiative. So I will turn it over at this point to Director Bob Abbey. Thank you.